Now, on Money News, do you ever imagine that you've got a great idea, you follow through with it, and all of a sudden you're competing with the big guys? Well, that's what Russell and Kogan did. As I said, uh, BRW's young rich list put him on that list of $29 million. Whether that's right or not, he'll probably debate it. But the truth is that what Russell and Kogan did is he went to China. Uh, and he's been on the program before talking about this and really saw a whole lot of branded goods out there and thought, well, hang on, I wonder whether these these uh, factories could actually make these goods for me. And lo and behold, they could, and he could put his own name on them, and as a result, he could bring them back in here and market them via the internet. And it's been successful for him, obviously. Russell Kogan joins me now. G'day, Russell, how are you doing? G'day, Ross. Good mate yourself. Oh, really well, thank you. Really well. Um, now, tell me this. One thing I want to talk to you about is the Aussie dollar. It's absolutely flying at the moment. Of course, the Chinese do, the Chinese do link their currency to the US currency. Does that mean you're getting a real benefit when you get stuff manufactured in China and brought back into Australia right now? Um, oh, well, the consumers are benefiting because they're getting products for cheaper. But for our business, it doesn't really make a difference. I'm happy with the dollar at whatever it is, as long as it's the same for everyone else. As long as Harvey Norman's getting it for the same, as long as Samsung's getting it for the same, I'm happy for the dollar to be anything because it's our supply chain and business model that adds the value. One of the issues that a lot of people have uh, spoken about in recent times is, of course, you've put out that ad just recently which took on Jerry Harvey, of course. And, and of course, Jerry Harvey reacted to it, which probably, from Jerry's point of view, I actually thought it would be the sort of thing that Jerry would have done when he was a young bloke himself but the whole point about that is is that you're really trying to tweak the tail of the majors right now and that is actually a part of your business strategy right now would that be right to say uh, it's been a part of our strategy all along we're here to say well look the way the way things have been is there's too much crap out in the market there's too much dishonesty uh there's all these inefficient business practices going on and you know we live technology and we think there's always a better way so we're here to innovate and make things better so our message from the start has been look we're here to take on the big guys and we're here to change things and make them better but of course they've got enormous buying power and so as a result of that that's where their stores come from that's where their franchises come from all of those types of things come from their massive buying power of course you're now starting to get some scale as well but is it a case where that also is one of their great advantages look no matter what buying power you have when your business process involves going from a factory to an exporter to an importer to a distributor to a retailer you've got a whole set of middlemen that each want their 15 20 percent along the way so you know even though you've got buying power you're eating into a lot of that with every middleman wanting their car with Kogan it's direct but also on top of that we're currently expanding into the UK. Our business is growing here month on month. A lot of smart shoppers are turning to Kogan to buy their electronics and home appliances. And, you know, as a result of that, we keep smashing the competition on price. Is it one of those things where you really do have to keep on top of the quality and obviously keep on top of your customer service as well? Because they are the two things that ultimately could bring you undone. If there's any business risk that you've got, apart from the Aussie dollar, it is actually about the quality of the manufacturing and the quality of the customer service. Oh, quality is something that you know we work on every single day. We've got quality control teams that go in at every stage of the manufacturing process, and as well as that, there's the customer service. Now, you know we have to provide first-class customer service because our business is transparent. If someone goes along to Google and types in Kogan, we can't afford for them to read a bad review, and that means that everything we do has to ensure that there's top-notch quality product and that every single customer is really happy. Our business is fully transparent. You can't get that sort of detail about product and reviews of service and products from the other major retailers. When you walk in, you've got no idea. Did the last guy who bought from this salesman think that they were honest? Did they get a good deal? Things like that. Every single one of our customers has a voice. It's like going into a big shopping center and giving every single customer there a megaphone. So that's what the internet is, and that's why smart shoppers are turning online. And tell me this, Russell and Kogan, you may, you may have made your way onto the BRW Young Rich list. You may be tweaking the tail of the likes of Jerry Harvey. But is it true, despite all of those things, you can't actually get a job at McDonald's at the moment? Yeah, it is true, you know. I, I no, wait, you have a first question. So, so, so you have recently, personally, applied for a job at McDonald's. Is that right? That's correct, and got a rejection letter. Why, first up, why did you apply for a job at McDonald's, given the fact you've obviously already got your own business that you're running? Yeah, well, 
the thing is that when it comes to business, we believe that things can always be better. So we're always looking to learn, and we're looking to learn from some of the world's biggest organisations. McDonald's has great processes and procedures, and they do things very efficiently. I wanted to learn, well, is there anything that this company is doing that we could implement at Kogan to you know, make our product offering even better? Things can always be better, and we're always looking to improve. So, so, so what was it that they, they didn't like about you, Ruslan? Because surely you'd be an upstanding, upstanding citizen that they'd be wanting to get in, in front of their customers. Uh, yeah, mate, that's what I thought as well. It was a bit heartbreaking, but, um, <laughs> you know, after after a few media outlets contacted them, they said that there actually wasn't any positions available in the store that I nominated. Oh, I well, see. So, is that what it was? Yeah. It's very funny. I wonder whether they'd done any research along the way. Can I just say, there is an entrepreneur who obviously is looking to try and learn, as I say, even to the point of going to McDonald's, try and learn. Learn from the best. And the way in which you do learn, obviously, is by going and getting your hands dirty and actually working out exactly how organisations tick. Russell and Kogan, I know we'll certainly speak again in the future, and we appreciate your time here on Money News Tonight. Great. Thanks, Russell. Good on you, Russell. No problems at all. Great story, that. And as I say, you sit there and you say that, you know, there is no endeavour, no real initiative out there. Well, go and have a look at Russell and Kogan's story. It's not a bad one, I've got to tell you.